Amen. Okay. And as uh, we promised, because we are doing this uh, series when we are looking at uh, all the things Jesus came to do for us one by one. Amen. We say he came to redeem us from what? From disease, from curses, from poverty, from sin, and from death. So uh, last time, last Sunday, we attack uh, all the curses and pray against them. Amen. And today, we want to talk about the divine riches. Amen. The divine riches. And we touched the divine riches are far beyond financial riches. Amen. Because when we are talking about riches, Jesus came to make us, uh, what do you call it, rich. So some people think the riches is financial riches. But the riches that Jesus has come to give us is a divine riches. But that riches can be, can bring financial riches. But it may not as well. So the financial riches must not be our priority. But financial riches are like a resources to advance the kingdom as far as as much as you need it god will give it to you amen for you to advance the kingdom or to supply the need your needs amen okay so let's go and uh, the first uh, uh, scripture we're gonna look at is uh, second corinthians 8 9 that says that for you know the grace of our lord jesus christ that though he was rich amen he was not financially rich financially rich in heaven, amen? Though he was rich, yet for your sake, he became poor, that through you, he, his poverty might become, uh, that you through his poverty might become rich. So he had made himself poor for us because he came to our level, become like a human being. Because human beings are so poor, Amen. Are so poor, but we are going to talk about the riches, okay, of God. But to be honest with you, I cannot say everything, but I will say few of them. Amen. Few of them, amen. That can really open our eyes that we are really meant to be rich. Amen. So, John ten ten. One thing I want to open your eyes on today. He said, "The thief does not come expect to steal, to kill, or to destroy. I have come." that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. Amen. Uh, some versions say a rich and satisfied life. Hallelujah. But now the first part is what I want to talk about first. It says the thief does not come except to steal, to kill or to destroy. Have you ever seen any thief going to a poor man's house or into a poor man's domain? No. Amen. A thief will always go to where he can see something that is valuable. So if the devil as a thief will be interested into your life, into my life, that means there are some riches the Lord has put there. So some of us, right now among us, you have some zeal before because the life of God was in you. You have the zeal. You wanted to sing. You wanted to do this. You wanted to do that. But the thief came and still, amen, has stolen what was inside you. And then you become done spiritually. You don't want to do things anymore. So that is the thief. But this morning, I'm prophesizing and releasing this word that anything that has been stolen from you, that are valuable from divine va values, let them be restored to you in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Amen. So, then when the thieves come, he will, will come to steal, to kill and to destroy. So when he comes, he comes to steal our talent. He comes to steal Whatever the Lord, you see that some of us, you have received some prophecy. You know that God is about to do this to you. But now some tests come, the thief will make you fail the test, or some, some situation comes, and you do something, and that's it. You open the door to the thief to come and do whatever you want to do for this agenda of God upon your life to be postponed. But this morning, 
We are praying that uh, everything that has been stolen, uh, all of you, in, in, in whom house the, in, the devil has entered, I'm casting that devil out of your house right now in the name of Jesus. And whosoever lost anything, that is a talent. That is a zeal. That is whatever is the will of God that you have lost, that have been killed in you. I'm prophesizing, I'm releasing the life of God into that for that to come back alive to today in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. So sometimes misunderstanding will enter your house. Sometimes certain things that are supposed not to be there will enter your house, but you don't know that the thief is coming. You will come in destroy relationship, it destroys friendship, you destroy family relationship, it destroys a lot of things. But we Christians, we don't discern. Hallelujah. But those things, if we are pray, we are people who who ought to, who are praying as we ought to, I'm telling you, we'll be seeing them before they come. So when you see them, the time they are about to come, you see them as you pray, you cancel them and they will never come into manifestation. Amen. So and this is what the Bible, the Bible says here. But let's go to Revelation 5, Revelation 3, verse 15 to, 13, to, 14, uh, to 19. He said, I know all things you do, that you are not uh, neither caught nor cold. I wish that you were one or the other. But since you are like lukewarm water, neither hot or cold, I will spit you out of my mouth. You, you say, I am rich. That's what Christians today are saying, our generation. I am rich. I have everything I want. I don't need a thing. And you don't realize that you are wreck, miserable, and poor, and blind, and naked. So I advise you to buy gold from me. Gold that has been purified by fire. Then you will be rich also. You'll be rich also. Buy white garment from me. So you will not be sh shamed by the, your nakedness. Uh, anointment oil for your eyes so that you will be able to see. I correct and discipline everyone I love. So be diligent and turn from your indifference. Turn from your indifference. So what is happening here? The word that you say at the end, turn for your indifference, is it, it just highlighting how Christians become selfish. Amen. Our generation more selfish than any other. To the point that when we have our little job, car, or whatever can satisfy our little person, we say we don't need a thing. But whatever matters to God does not matter to us. Area. So until whatever matter to God, matter to us, we are poor, work, miserable, and poor in the eyes of God. Amen. He said, Amen. When I look at the, the first Adam, Adam, uh, the first man, Adam, he was richer than Solomon in the eyes of God. Area. I, both of the Bible talk about Adam. But the Bible never talk about the riches of Adam. But I'm going to talk about the riches of Adam today, which is the divine riches. Amen. Adam used to talk to God face to face. When Adam, what we call today, scanner, every kind of scanner, every kind of computer, all those was in Adam alone. Adam could have seen you. When he sees you, he will scan you, scan your brain, see whatever is in, scan your body, see your skeleton, see, he sees everything. He, I won't say he scan you because the eyes he has is the eyes of God. This is how he sees in the dimensions of God. That's the divine riches. Earlier. Divine riches, when you want to do something, one of you, I'm here, I want to do something in South Africa. As I'm praying, South Africa appear in front of me, and I will do it, and it's done. That's it. I don't need to be traveling to buy tickets, all this thing. That's divine riches. Amen. You want to go somewhere, you can disappear from here, and you will appear there. Earlier. You have no limitation. There's nothing in this world that can limit you. That can limit you. Amen. 
Divine riches, you want something, you command it, the things appear. You don't need to be working, 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 working. So uh, working from the, uh, the is what you for your brow. That's divine riches. Amen. This is what, because the true human being, we have lost it. I mean, the true human nature, that is the likeness of God. Amen. We lost it. Then Jesus came to restore that. But still, our eyes are not open yet to know what Jesus has done for us, what he has in store for us, for us to go for that. Amen. But now when you have that divine riches, I'm telling you, just look at it. Amen. Just look at it this way. God against what is going on on earth today. Who is winning? God will win or God will change everything. But God is saying he has given us all authority. He said, Jesus, all authority. Jesus said, all authority has been given to him what? In heaven and on earth. That means he has control of everything, every power that is in heaven. So for, for him, for him, okay, we can have access to that power to change things on earth. But still we are not getting it. Amen. So when you have that divine riches, that may bring, that may bring what? There's financial riches, but if your, your mind is not in the financial riches, because what you need is somewhere to sleep, somewhere to eat, something to eat, the little that you need, that's enough for you, hallelujah. Amen. So I want to tell us that when God say, buy gold from me, amen, it means that even when they you say people are poor, they come to buy, they are not going to buy with money, you buy with love, you buy with your heart. Amen. The more you love, like what you talk about priesthood, the more, the more you love and what you love, what matters to God, and you are pleading with God for what matters to him to come to pass, for things that is not of him to go, to depart, for the situation to be changed into what is of God. This is what God says, hey, let me enrich this guy. Amen. It's a white garment. Amen. That close all the door of the to the enemy. When I'm saying what garment, see, when your life is pure, so there is a a, a, a garment or the, a garment or a cloth or a robe that God will put on you to the point that the enemy will not see you or have access to your life. Amen. Look, the enemy, they are what? They are a spirit of darkness. So when your what you are wearing is so bright and white, they don't support that, they don't support light. So they cannot see what is even in your mind or in your heart to have access to it. Do you think that the devil knows what is in the mind of God? No, he cannot have access. So this garment, when we buy it from God, so we become friendship, we can become friends with God. We become one with God to the point that we'll be sharing things with God and the enemy will never have access. Amen. But if we want to live by the activities of this world, by the things of this world, by the values of this world, so the enemy, the garment, no, the enemy can have access and play our wife, manipulate the way you want. Amen. So the anointment, he said, by anointment for your eye, then you'll be able to see in the dimensions of God, like Adam. Amen. In the dimensions of God, like Adam. I'm telling you, somebody, you, you, all the thing they stand can do, you can do. Amen. God sees all this in. Amen. Let God open your eyes. Amen. Start opening your eyes when you are praying really before people with all your heart. Amen. Okay. I will give you this little testimony. The first time God opened my eyes, I haven't done science. So, amen. Open my eyes to see somebody's brain, to see whatever is happening in the brain because the person used to forget a lot. So, how to, what to do. Uh, why I'm praying, praying, God open my eyes as I saw everything inside, what is happening, everything. Amen. And then you can even fix it. And then he told me, amen, because, because before that, he, he taught me how Adam used to see. That's why you could have seen how he, he described Eve and all the others. But now his brain is more than all the computer of the earth together because the guy, he, he lived for um, almost a, a, a thousand year, amen, uh, around thousand years. But those thousand years, everything, he can remember everything. Can remember everything. 
Amen. So, brother and sister, this is what Jesus came to give us. But it's like we are not getting it. Amen. So, let us see what Jesus said. Jesus said in Matthew 28, verse 18 to 19, he said, Jesus came and talked with them, say, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make people from all the nations into disciples. And to what? Into what disciples? Amen. Immersing them into the reality of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Can you immerse somebody into the reality of the Father if you don't have access to the Father or access to heaven? Okay. So to the Son. So you know the Son. You know the Father. You know the Holy Spirit. So you and the Holy, so everything that the Holy Spirit can do, the Holy Spirit will teach you. So you have this intimacy with the Holy Spirit, with the Son, with the, the, with the Father. You know the relationship between the three of them. You know how they operate. You know everything. Amen. But when, when we stop ourselves into the literal meaning of what the Bible is saying, we don't have access to these divine riches. Amen. We don't have access to it. So it is important we know that he said, what he said very well, that is very important. Say, all authority has authority has been given to me it was in heaven. But why we want to do something on earth, he's talking to us about the things in heaven. That means he said he will be with us till the end of the age. That means what? So if we are with him, all authority, the authority he has in heaven, we can have access to that authority. We can share, we can become partaker of that authority to deal with things and overcome things on earth and to heaven invade earth. That one is not money we need to use to campaign to have, to have it done. It's the power of God. It's the wisdom of God. Amen. So it is important that we understand these things. Amen. Very important that we understand this thing. Amen. So look now, verse, uh, uh, verse what? Verse one. It says, Then he called his 12 disciples together and gave them power and authority over all the demons and all the uh, to cure disease. But now, if you remember John 17, he said he is not praying just for those who are in front of him, but he's praying for everyone that will come, including you and I. But now, do we believe in this? If we believe in it, so that means that we should have authority over all the sicknesses, commanding them to go. And they will go. Amen? But now, before uh, Luke 10, 19 to 20, he said, look, I have given you authority over all the powers of the enemy, all the powers of the enemy. And you can walk among snake and scorpion and crush them. Nothing will enjoy you, but don't rejoice because, if, uh, because evil spirits um, obey you. Rejoice because your name is resisted in heaven. What is he saying? Pursue a higher rank, values of heaven. Don't be limited by what, okay? Limited or focus on what you can have as an attention on earth here. Amen? Because when you compare yourself to the standard of Christ, you keep on working. To the standard of the Father, you keep on working. But when you compare yourself to human being here, hallelujah, to human being here, you will be so, you won't see everything God is doing and you will be limited because human beings are limited. Amen. So it is important that we understand this. Here the Lord is saying to us not to rejoice because we have some attention on earth. Amen. To pursue the real riches of heaven that can help us dominate the earth. Okay. Or that can make him dominate the earth for us. Amen. If you remember, okay, I want to, uh, the scripture I want to use to, it says, my father has entrusted everything to, to me. No one truly knows the, the son except the father 
and no one truly knows the Father except the Son, and those whom the Son choose to reveal the Father to. Okay, so if the, the Father, he, he, no one really knows the, the Father except the Son, that means, yeah, but if the Son is all powerful on earth and nobody can ever do anything against the Son, it's because of the Father. But now if the son give you the grace, you too, to know the father, to share into that glory, to share into that likeness, to share into that power. So who can do anything against you? Nobody. No one. Amen. But now what I want to ask you to open our eyes on to know what we are talking about. He said, say, I tell you the truth. I mean, Matthew 11, the first one I read is Matthew 11, 27. Now I'm Matthew 11, 11 to 13. He said, I tell you the truth. For of all who have ever lived, none is greater than John the Baptist. Yet, even the least person in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he is. Listen, eh? is greater than he is. And from the time John the Baptist began preaching until now, the kingdom of heaven have been forcefully advancing, amen, and violent people are attacking it. For before John came, all the prophets and all and the law of Moses to look forward to this present time. What is he saying? How many miracles John the Baptist have done in the Bible? We have seen none. We have no record. But see, they say, all the men who were living on earth in the time of John the Baptist, amen, no one is greater than him in heaven. So the riches and the greatness have nothing to do with how we value riches and greatness here. Amen. I want to tell you this. Some people are aware. Maybe do you are you aware that there are some war going on with the jihadists and all this in, in Mali and in uh, uh, some part of Africa? Are you uh, okay? I don't know if if you are aware. Okay, but that war is going to be end very soon. Why? Because spirit that are behind that, those war, I saw them being dissolved just this morning. But who knows? Nobody. Amen. No one knows. Okay, I'm telling you right now. Amen. So to tell you that the divine riches, okay, God has, God will want to take bad, wrong, war, disease, everything out of the earth. But he's just waiting for real people or his true people who can trust him and believe in his word, amen, with all their heart and put up a put up a lifestyle that can help them so they can become a channel God can be using, amen, to remove completely what is wrong out of the earth. Amen. Like right now, we just need to wake up and to know that this corona, all this thing that is happening, the seal one has been opened. He said what I saw, what the seal one say, even let me just read it quickly so we can know what you are talking about. Revelation 6. Six. One. He said, now I saw when the lamb opened one of the seal, and I heard one of the four living creatures saying with a voice like a thunder, uh -huh. even the voice of a thunder, there is something behind it. Come and see. And I look and behold a white horse. He who sat on it had a bow. Amen. Amen. A, a bow. And a crown was given to him, and he went out conquering and to conquer. Conquering and to conquer. That means that every other thing, that's the first one that is open that God has opened. Now he's waiting for his people 
Amen. To come and team up with him. So everything that is bad, 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 the devil will be doing, whether it's this, they are disease, whether they are war, whether they are a economic problem, whether whatever it is, so we'll be winning them, winning them, winning them. But now we need to find a strategy to show people that all this we are winning, we are overcoming through God, or God is overcoming through us. So is God is God the manifestation of God, so people can be coming to God. Okay. This is the very time he said that you will see the manifestation of the sons of God. Alleluia. So we must know that we need the divine riches, alleluia, the divine riches to do this. We are not focused, we don't care about money, we don't care about anything. What we care about, the will of God to be done, the love of God manifested to people, and the wrong departing, okay, what's going on? Darkness disappearing. All the spirit that is of darkness destroy completely in the name of Jesus. Amen. So we need to know now how to acquire those divine riches. Let us talk about how to be enriched in a particular value or domain by God. This is what we want to look at, look at now. Amen. In the particular value of God, because a man. Can be rich, but no, in every but one, one, just take one, one, okay, you go. So the scripture I'm gonna say first is a, a what do you call it? Act 20, verse 35. He said, I have been, Paul talking here, I have been a constant example of how you can help those in need by working hard. You want to help people, you work hard. But now, today, today, in our generation how many christians say let me work hard because i need to help others very tiny mm -hmm. let me do overtime because i need to help others mm -hmm. amen this is what paul is saying yeah he said uh, god, god and I have been a constant example of how to you can help those in need by working hard. You should remember the word of the Lord Jesus. It is more blessing to give than to receive. More blessing to give than to receive. So what we are we talking about right now? You can be receiving, but you are not blessed. But when you are blessed, God has put you, has given you something, and you have a system, and that system is linked to you, and whatever value or it is in that domain will never finish. That's what God bless you. You will never finish. When I'm talking about financially, once talk, God bless somebody financially right now, God will give the person an idea. And resources, everything the good person will put a system in place. It could be businesses, it could be an a, what do you call it, a, an industry, it could be anything. Amen. But that thing will be working, working, and money will be coming. And but now that money you should the person will be using to supply. Or the example, the perfect example I always give is caterpillar. God gave him the idea to 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 do what what do you call it the mechanical agriculture and then so he create he creates some engines that can be doing uh, uh people can be using to what do you call it to motorize the uh what do you call it the farm and uh, everything so the king went boom he has money but what he was his heart was on the poor side god the kingdom god the kingdom god the kingdom Amen. God, the kingdom, God, the kingdom. So God said, okay. So the way you can do it, if you say right now, people are poor in the word of God, and you say you want to be feeding them, you want to be feeding them. Whenever God sees your heart, that with all your heart, your soul, everything within you is to supply. You are poor, but you say you want to supply. You are poor in that domain. You see the need in other people's lives and you say you want to supply. God said, this is the one I can give to for him to be giving others. But now what, while you are asking God, you are asking God, God will be inspired you, fasting, prayer, this, that, that, and it become your lifestyle. But then that lifestyle become a system which will enable God to be supplying that needs all the time. 
revelation, revelation. If it's riches, riches, whatever it is, God will be giving you. So there's nothing, because he's still Peter, I'll give you what? The keys of heaven. There's nothing. It's like this morning, oh, he showed me, I saw a lot of bunch of keys like this. All of them, that's the keys of the truth set free. All the keys he has given us. But those keys are there. Anybody with good heart can see any needs run on. Say, Father, I want to do this. Father, and you are pleading for others. That's love. With that love, you gain these things. And you become talented. You become gifted. And nobody can dispute it. That's that area you are seated. Why? You are not seated, but God is seated in that area within you. Like the way... Any dream you brought to Joseph, Joseph was able to interpret. Why? Because the dream interpretation, the interpreter of the dream was sitting in him. So anything. So if he's why not? He said, No, Father, I want to help financially. Whatever it is, amen. It could be teaching, it could be power, it could be finances, it could be healing, it could be resurrection of the dead. Anything that is within the mission of Jesus. Okay, the mission of Jesus. If you say, I want to win souls, and you are praying, you are praying, the little money you have, you have, you, you, you buy leaflet, you do whatever you can, and you are praying. God, when God sees, God will help you. This is how you become rich. Amen. And some people call it anointing, but what I'm talking about is far beyond anointing. Amen. This week, they say there are some people in Mali, what happens? They were they took a bus. They were going to a festival, but now as the jihadists are there doing certain things, they just go and went and hide that the, the bus and kills everybody in the bus. Say, Father, this cannot continue. I start praying, praying, praying. You open my eyes. You show me. But now, what is bizarre about the things? But I understand in a later one. I explain. I was bizarre about the thing. I was praying for the spirit. That I said, this work cannot continue. I pray, pray. All of a sudden, I saw the spirit appear. But the spirit is appearing from Niger. The things are happening in Mali, the spirit is appearing from Niger. Amen. And I saw the Lord destroy the spirit. I heard as well, the same spirit is in the Central Africa, Central Republic of Africa. Carry on praying, 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 until that one as well appear, see, destroyed. But I understand the spirit that is doing the thing, the spirit behind the French government, that the French government is doing the things. I'm going to publish it. I'm going to say it. Amen. So, bear, wait till not generally they have to go. They will leave the place. Amen. So, to tell you that anything you see that is not right, if you can put your priest with you, anything, just start praying, just start praying, just start praying. You see God. Amen. God destroy the things. Amen. Some in you don't even need to go those far. Amen. Some in your families, <laughs> some in your house, some is your husband or is your wife or is your son or is your daughter. You see the situation. The situation is not right, and you are just saying complaining, complaining. Don't complain. Pray. Nothing happens without spirit behind because you are rich. There is something rich, something valuable in your life or the life of your child or the life of your daughter. Look, somebody knew very well. You both of you were going to church. All of a sudden, they suddenly will say, I don't want to go to church. The person starts developing some argument against church, against this. What is happening? It's the devil. It's the devil. Cast that devil out. Amen? Whatever I may take. Prayer, fasting, whatever it may take. Cast it out. Amen? So, in every area, we can see that God, are, God people are lacking. Amen? Every area we see people are lacking or struggling with a particular need. God bless us. God can bless us with the solution for them. Therefore, love is the greatest riches a man can have and use to buy financial, whatever riches he needs from God. A person who has no love will lack, a, a person who, who has no love, amen, is in trouble. 
Because it's with love, you, you, you gain everything. Amen. So Proverbs 21, 13 say, those who shut their ear, listen to this, eh? those who shut their ear to the cry of the poor will be ignored in their own time of need. But when you look at this, when you take it literally, you think because you have money, and the poor are there, you don't give. No, you are taking in the dimension of human being. Let's take in the dimension of God. Do anybody who's in any need, that is example I gave right now, those people who are being killed, who continue being killed, I don't know them, not from the country, but I'm, I'm not, what do you call it, indifferent from what they are suffering. So, because if I do my hand like this, Somebody may, I will not talk. When I do like that, you understand I'm saying come. When I do like this, you understand I'm saying bye-bye. So when I say the, the, the cry of those who shut the ear to the cry of the poor, somebody who needs something, but is poor, he doesn't have it. You are aware of it, but you are indifferent. That's why he's saying that the church of our generation, we, are, we must turn from our indifference. Whatever matter to God is matter to God, must matter to us. Because if you are not doing that, whenever you have a need as well, and you have a need, what, what, what is it? He said, you'll be ignored. They'll be in, in, ignored in their own time of need. He said the person will be ashamed of him before men. He will be ashamed of them before the father. It may be you yourself, you have some need today, but you don't even know. But at the appointed time, God will give you, God will supply. Why? Because you are not ignore, uh, um, what do you call it? indifferent before the cry of others. I read this again. He said those who shut their ear to the cries of the poor will be ignored in their own time of need. So the year here is talking about our indifference before the need of others. If we are fully, we are truly willing to help others by using the little we, we can, but you start by using the little we have today. Amen. What makes the church of our generation poor is the lack of loving hearts, compassion for others, and lack of focus in doing good. What do we talk about? What do we mean by good? He said, you are the light of the world, like a city on the hilltop that cannot be hidden. No one lights a lamp, then put it under the basket. Instead, a lamp is placed on the stand where it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your good deed shine out for all those to, for all to see, so that everyone will praise your heavenly Father. So, what is he talking about? Whatever there is lack, we we'll go to God. God will inspire us, or God will tell us, or God will empower. Us, God will give us what to do. When we start doing it, it will inspire others. Your good deed. So we are not the light of the world until we show the world how what is good and how to do good and how to change, take darkness out and put light in place. Amen. So in other words, amen, we need to just be showing everyone wherever we are the way. That's why even the first church Jesus established on earth before going, he was called the way. It's the way. You can prove it. I have five scriptures in the Bible to prove it, but it's not what we are talking about today. So right now, the light is needed in families, education, government, media, all the false religions, businesses, and the heart the art and entertainment. 
Amen. Diseases are everywhere. Curses are ru ruining people's lives. Poverty, we cannot talk about it. Even poverty, we are talking about. We are not even talking about the poverty, uh, poverty of uh, financial poverty. We are talking about the the riches of God. They are not there. If they are there, you cannot see some people. Somebody who's the president or he become authority runner. He's so scared for his life. He will run to the juju ju man. Why? Because we ministers have no shown enough of God for people to trust our God, not to trust the Jew people. Amen. When people sin, look at the curse. Curse make people life struggle. Amen. Disease make them sad. Amen. And weak. Po po poverty is a, a curse by definition. And sin sudden the Holy Spirit within us. Death must be overcome. Amen. So Jesus is calling us to come together. Amen. To come together and to get the same authority he got from the Father to, to overcome all this. Amen. And if we read, a, 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 we read Revelation, look at what he said in Revelation. He said, Revelation 2, 26 to 28. He said, to all who are victorious, all who overcome, all who become rich, who obey me to the very end, to them I will give authority over all the nations. They will rule the nation with iron rods, smashing them like clay pots. They will have the same authority I received from my father. And they will be given the morning star. What do we call morning star? When we are in darkness. And we see that the dawn are coming. Everybody can see the sign that, oh, now light is coming. Now peace is coming. Now, uh, uh, what do you call prosperity? Now good are coming. Now uh, uh, disease are going. So we will not be having disease anymore. All the bad, bad things the enemy have thrown on the earth are going, are, are going to, uh, are disappearing. Everybody can see the money coming. Then you are the star that is shining for people to have to, to trust that our money is coming. Alvia, uh, John 14, verse 12 say what? He uh, said, I tell you the truth, anyone who believes in me will do the same work I have done and even greater works because I am going to be with the, what? the father and you can ask for anything in my name and I will do it so that the son can bring glory to the father. And yes, I am as ask me for anything in my name, anything attached to my mission, anything attached to my function. Because he is the savior. He is the redeemer. Amen. And I will do them. Anything, I will do it. Amen. So, brothers and sisters, to tell you that, we want to conclude to tell you that, okay, today, God is waiting for us. Amen. Because what is the thing is that we don't realize who we are. We don't realize the, the time we are in. We are not discerning to know that actually you who look at yourself like nothing is the very person God is waiting for. God has chosen for those great things he has promised to the world and to humanity. And you don't realize. So wake up. Amen. And share, grow in him to share his authority. Amen. So, brothers and sisters, the riches are yours. The potential is there. Just wake up. Start praying. Start praying. The more you come in God, the more you discover yourself. That means you discover the portion he has for you. Because uh, Ephesians 4, verse 13 says, well, we will, This will continue until we all measure to the, we become mature in the faith of Christ, to measuring up to the same standard like Christ. Amen. So I'll say, God bless you. Amen. God bless you. Let's just pray quickly before 
if anybody have some question, they can ask question because if not, uh, okay, which one I need? There is this one I need. If not, I mean, there's uh, this one. Father, I want to thank you. Great and wonderful word. I'm praying for everyone who hear this message. Father, who's ever have any disease that is in the person right now, I'm releasing the healing gift to heal right now in the name of Jesus. The healing gift to heal in the name of Jesus. Destroy every single curses upon the life of my brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. Every single curse is upon the life of my brothers and sisters. Spirit of limitation. Spirit of limitation. Go in the name of Jesus. I paralyze you. Blindness. I destroy you. Father, I release your light into everyone's soul for their eyes to be open, to see around them so you can show them who they are, what they are, what they can do, what they are in this life for. King of kings, I want to thank you. Great God, I'm praying for the grace of focus and consistency in the relationship and work with you. Lord, I want to thank you. I destroy shyness. I destroy pride. I destroy every single arsenal of power of the enemy that is using to control people's mind, and people's behavior. Lord, release your power. Release your anointing. Release everything that God we need these days in order to advance your kingdom. Father, every single value that has been stolen, I call them back to be restored into my brothers and sisters' life in the name of Jesus. Thank you. God bless you. Amen.